Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to the NTT IndyCar Open Series here at Homestead Miami Speedway. I'm Austin. I, I am joined by Marco Barbadera, and we are live for the second week in Miami. It's the end of the doubleheader, and we are on the road course today. How you doing, Marco? And I'm loving these new graphics. I want to, I want to know what our audience thinks of them, too. Yeah, considering they are very much a work in progress, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, what better time to experiment than on Friday nights? Now, um, isn't it, uh, you know, unique that, uh, or strange or curious or whatever that uh, in the same two weeks uh, that AEW has had their bash at the beach double header, we are doing uh, our double header as well here in... Uh, sadly, we are not... Uh, on uh, on the boat of Jericho for this second race, but we are still in lovely Miami, so it is going to be a fantastic way to round up these two weeks here at the beach. And now, of course, we are on the on the road course, uh, like you said, the B version, as you can see on the track map. So basically, the infield section plus uh, the rest of the oval, excluded the uh, NASCAR one and two, basically. So uh, quite a unique challenge for these drivers. It's definitely going to provide a unique challenge. Uh, road course arrow plus uh, oval doesn't really work out well with each other. But I was talking with a few drivers and they just said it's mostly slow speed corner. So expect a very low, uh, extremely low arrow from all these drivers. So it's going to be pretty close on track since it's going to be all about braking and what your setup is. It's just going to be so entertaining to watch and i can't wait to get to it because homestead miami is one of the best rovals on the calendar as for the second week running the cameras are uh, not playing nicely so bear with us for just a second <laughs> oh, and we're back for the Entity IndyCar Series. Sorry about that small break. The TV cameras were being a little bit mean, but we're being back and better than ever f as qualifying is finishing up right now. Oh, yeah, we are just waiting for the starting grid to begin. You can see the weather conditions on your screen right now. And we will be racing very, very soon. Nice to have Arjuna Kanki Patti back. If you remember, he was one of the main protagonists of the championship when we first started broadcasting last season. Then he had to uh, leave us due to personal reasons, due to, I think, work reasons. And now happy to have him back. Oh, we still have one minute left. So let's, uh, let's see uh, Mark Asher running around. Ooh, a lot of... That car is very unstable at the rear end. For those of you un, un uh, familiar with the road course, you're certainly going to be familiar with it right now because it's actually fairly simple. Turn one is just a flying left-hander, then it's hard on the brakes heading into the hairpin turn two, and then a little small S section. Then it's down a long straight into a 90 degree right-hander follow. This is where we join Mark Usher down another back straight another hairpin and then onto the oval and across the line that is a lap around homestead miami speedway road course b let's save with mark usher right here here's that first turn it's the fastest turn on this track besides the oval portion but qualifying's over so let's head on to the grid it's adam blocker starting up on pole for power slide bars of ahead of mark usher in p2 by over a tenth. Then there's a George Catapati in third place. Christopher Whale, 
the Canadian sitting in fourth. Philip Cross in fifth place. Clark Archer, the Texan, is sitting in sixth place, followed by Asandro Rocatello in seventh. Nicholas Rasmussen, the Scandinavian driver, is starting in eighth place. Will Lamb is in ninth. Thomas Zeiger is in tenth. Simon Bryant is in 11th last week's winner. Can he do it again from 11th place on the grid? And driver for Evolution Sim Sport, Barrett Rolf in P12. Tangar Kaganar is back this week in P13, followed by Richard Holt, Chris Ballman, Andrew Z. Wood, and Laura Gearhart in 17th place. Small, who has more 17 cars? Competitive field, I have to say. The, the race did split. Uh, just like last week, so we are basically uh, waiting uh, for the pace car to start rolling. We are expecting some very, very, very exciting moments there in uh, in turn one. A very hard turn one. It's almost, uh, almost Austin, like you have to break twice because uh, it's not like in Daytona where you have uh, the braking area straight away. Uh, but here, basically, you have to. Uh, turn left, uh, get as close as the, to the wall as you can, maybe we can not, no, we cannot see from the blimp here, and then you have, uh, you have that uh, uh, secondary braking area, the hard braking area for the 90 degree left hander, so especially at the beginning of the race with the cars all together, I'm expecting a little bit of, uh, you know, inevitable chaos there, hopefully everyone uh, is able to, uh, you know, to get through that uh, with uh, with ease as uh, we are rolling finally i have to say uh, once again a look at the weather uh, forecast uh, for today and as you can see it is basically midday and uh, i have to say the track temperature is hot but not as hot as we had last week on the oval yeah, last week it was reaching 126 degrees on the oval, which was providing a lot of drivers a lot of trouble to keep their tires in temperature and keep that tire wear down. So we're going to see a little bit struggling with grip, but not as much as last week, as I would like to shout out all the teams in this race right now. Impro improvised Design is in here, wishing good luck to Chris and Arjun. Arjun drive for uh, Reverend Racing, I believe. Yeah, yes. They're starting together. And, yes, there <laughs> is a lockout of the second row with the Reverend Racing guys. There's also a few other drivers throughout this field, part of Team Simon Bryant, part of Sadie Sin Sport, Nicholas Rasmussen, Alessandro Rocatello, and that, I believe that is Torino. Oh yeah, beautiful city in the northern, northwestern part of Italy, and also, uh, you know, the city. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I was born and raised in Rome, but from my mother's side, I'm from uh, the north, from Torino. So I actually uh, quite love that that city, uh, the first ever capital of Italy. Uh, you know, after that came Florence, and after that, uh, and still nowadays, of course is my hometown of Rome after this very interesting history lesson. I guess uh, we can say that the drivers are about uh, to go racing as they are heading into NASCAR, or should we say IndyCar 3 and 4? Well, let's call it IndyCar 3 and 4, why not? IndyCar as, 3 and 4. Yeah, you know, that, that is the only time of the year where this is uh, something you can say because of course Daytona is coming, and so you will live for 24 hours NASCAR 1 and 2 and NASCAR 3 and 4, time to go racing. The safety car is pulling off, and it's all in the hands of Adam Blocker. Ladies and gentlemen, we're finishing off this doubleheader with a bang as Adam Blocker floors it. And we're going green flag racing for the NTT IndyCar Open Series here at Homestead, Miami. And it's a great start by Blocker and Usher. And through the field, Nicholas Rasmussen already jumped up one place. Thomas Zeiger, two places. Alessandro Rocatella has fallen down three spots already. And it's a big old gaggle, three wide through turn three. They fly down the first of many straights. Usher gets the lead ahead of Adam Blocker. On 
Labore, Christopher Will. Good, solid start for him. Sydney in fourth place. He's got a great view of the fights up ahead. He's got a good run up from Ajord Katapati of Revan Racing. Can his teammate beat him to it? And look at this line. Much different than the oval line where they're staying all the way down low and not taking the wider line and saving those tires. And Adam Blocker with all that arrow. He's got a lot of drag. He's going to swing it off to the outside. Side by side across the line. Adam Blocker leads the first black. And he swings it around, cuts off the nose, heading into the break zone of turn two. Oh, oh here we go. That's off. That's Christopher Way. Canadian is uh, into the gravel, losing several positions. And following him is uh, Tange Kengener, who switched from uh, Penske to Ganassi Racing for this race. As you can see, I'm going to miss a bit uh, that uh, all uh, chrome livery of, uh, you know, um, Penske inspiration. But at the same time, of course big fan of Alessandro Zanardi and so big, big you know love that uh, Ganassi uh, livery of the of the late 90s as uh, situation at the front is still the same but now of course Philip Kraus has been promoted to P4 Kraus of course a teammate of uh, Niklas Rasmussen as you can see here slightly different colors but same paint scheme same, same, same sponsors Clark Archer now, of course, uh, for the uh, V Apex uh, Racing Group up to P5. Block, looking back for Blocker's rear wing. He's got a big old gaggle of cars right behind him. And in the background, that's Philip Cross trying to uh, peek his way um, outside our Arjan Katapati is already looking for more moves to make up. As this is a good strength of field, we can't really see it. 3.7k, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 we have a big mess. Oh, my goodness. Tango Kegadar involved. Laura Gearhart getting into the back foot, but that is Will Lamb missing a lot of parts for his car. What has happened here? I hear a lot of sliding. I believe Will Lamb has swung oh. it around and just parked it on the racing line. And Richard Holt took a big old, big old hit so right Will there. Lamb, Will Lamb spun. I guess he spun and uh, unfortunately he was uh, sitting there in the middle of the track. Yes. And so he went a bit wide on the dirt and then he was pointing in the wrong direction and it was basically open season, a couple of big hits there, uh, a very unfortunate situation, especially this early in the races. Oh, Ken Giner has tangled once again with, uh, I guess that would be Roccatello. So they crashed already in that mess there and then something must have happened. You see Ken Giner is missing the front wing as he is entering uh, the... The, the, the Roval and Roccatello went for a move and oh. uh, didn't turn. Uh, so I guess he must have some damage of his own after that big mess. And uh, Lamb yeah, is in the pits. You can see. So, he... another. Sorry, Austin, to interrupt you. Uh, I think that uh, something that's very interesting is going to see the fact that these guys will have push to pass today and they will be able to use it, of course, on the Oval as well. So. Uh, it could be, you know, interesting to see how the, you know, of course they are going to be slower than last week because, as you can see, you folks at home, the drivers are using uh, the uh, road course configuration for the car, so bigger wings. But at the same time, could be, it could be an interesting, uh, interesting thing. As uh, I think I might have to change the color for the lower bar because it's a, <laughs> a bit too bright. <laughs> I saw that pop up. I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> a little bit too bright. <laughs> but hey, she, but hey, experiments are always fun, and that's what we like to do here on Fridays in yeah. our favorite series. You know, especially since I decided to do this experiment 20 minutes before the start of the race. So, and Wonderful. hopefully, we, we, we won't get a lawsuit uh, from a certain electric uh, open wheeler championship. But if they were to come to uh, iRacing... Oh, we have the graphics to... already mostly done. <laughs> we just need to change something. <laughs> you know. Mark Usher sitting in second. 
He's got Ajon Katapati and the rest of the field chasing him down and at a blocker. The rest of the field is so tightly packed because the amount of drag that these cars are pulling off, the draft for these cars is not affecting them as much because it is all slow speed corner. So we aren't looking at downforce as the main culprit here. So it's going to be a very tightly packed race as it has been right now. And it's all going to be when you're going to use push pass and how well you use the tires. And there's a move happening in the back for P5. That is Philip Cross on Rasmussen. He dived up the inside. He got P5. But now Clark Archer is looking for a move down the inside up onto IndyCar 3 and 4. Here's that fast turn one. They oh! go flat out. Late on the brakes for Clark Archer. He saved it from the gearbox of Cross. No, of Rasmussen. And I thought that and was a, a, a crash waiting to happen, basically. Um, the way he went so deep on the brakes. Huh? But uh, good driving from everyone, able to make it through. As now, of course, Cross and Rasmussen, the two teammates, fourth and fifth. Uh, we got uh, news from the chat that... Uh, Despite uh, running the Reverend Racing livery, Ajuna Kankipati is actually uh, driving for power slide for this IndyCar season and therefore uh, his teammates to, to Adam Blocker there at the front, so a very, very valuable ally for, uh, for Adam there at the front of the field. With, of course, and Laura Gerhardt. Gerhard. And Laura Gerhardt, of course, who unfortunately been involved in a couple of... Uh, you know, Laura has uh, been uh, very consistent, of course, uh, but so it, she can have some races where she is a bit, uh, uh, you know, too much involved. Uh, not not through her fault of her own. Uh, she, either, she either has a squeaky clean race or, you know, her races can be a bit of a suffering, but she gets the most out of every race she does. So that's why she's so well positioned in the championship, as we see. Uh, Bauman and Holt fighting as Rasmussen with a mistake, big mistake oh, actually, losing two wide. three positions. Exactly where we saw that first incident go in the same quarter. That giant gravel trap out there just showing on how easy it is to make a mistake. Go deep right there. You just hear the back end swinging out. Just can't take it like a medium speed corner. So Rasmussen drops back to where he started in P8. Clark Archer back up to fifth with Thomas Zeiger looking to challenge him right now. And Kankipat is wide, uh, but he saves the car. Sorry for the quick cut there. Let's see if he got lucky or if it was just a minor excursion in the daisies as he was following Mark Asher. He's still very close to Mark Asher. So... He went a bit wide. I know he was a bit lucky because there it's easy and he was lucky and good because Let's when you say. put your car there and you're basically the car is in a braking state even though you're not braking anymore. It's so, so easy to lose control of your... Uh, oh, as we have a little bit of sun, uh, finally. Uh, we are in Miami. I was a bit uh, concerned about the lack of sunlight shining on the track. But uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, nice and shiny as it should be even at this time of the year here on uh, uh, Olmsted Miami Speedway. It is always supposed to be sunny in the sunshine state of Florida. I know a few drivers uh, who watch the series and race in the series uh, who are from that state and uh, they tell me it's pretty cool. We from Texas, I beg to differ. You know, last Friday, uh, I talked to you, we went uh, below zero Celsius here in Rome. Uh, but today it was a lofty 10 degrees Celsius, so a little, little bit of weather uh, you know, excursion. It's not properly winter so far here. Oh, look at uh, Ziger with his uh, GoDaddy livery getting closer and closer to Clark Archer there at the front. Uh, cannot uh, make a move so far. Uh, we can see basically from the gaps on the left side of your screen right now a little bit of a... Uh, of a 
gap between the top four and the rest of the field. Of course, the biggest loser in oh. this is Christopher Wiles. Here we go with Ziger on the outside Ziger. in turn four. Go, oh, oh, go Daggy. More like go Ziger. Ziger got a great run in that draft. He's side by side, unable to get the move. No, take that back. He's going around the outside. Late on the brace goes Clark Archer. We saw him do that earlier on. And Archer saved himself. And oh, oh, he's right around. Him. Rasmussen has turned around Christopher Wheel. And Wheel is pointed the wrong way at the exit of turn three. An unlucky race for the driver who was sitting in uh, the second row. He got oh. tapped uh, by Nick Rasmussen there. Hopefully the car is okay, but another big, big positions loss. Let's see the the, the, the differential of oh, six positions lost. The biggest loser so far, of course, is Rocatello has been involved in that mess at the beginning of the race as we have Barrett, uh, Rolf and Simon Bryant. Bryant trying to go for the, the double, uh, but seems a long way now uh, to do that because of the fact that he's sitting in P9. And this is a reminder of a cart three wide across the line heading into turn one. I don't know what will. But Simon Bryant. Oh, he's off. Leading into turn one and leading straight into the grass. A little bit too much steam heading into that corner. And he goes back into P9. This was Mark Asher at the same time that the battle we were following making a mistake there in uh, this treacherous turn one going wide uh, leaving uh, to you know fight another day but this has brought Kankipati back in the mix and uh, Kraus of course blocker uh, breathing a sigh of relief two seconds now in front uh, two and a half I should say in front of blo uh, uh, sorry blocker in front of Asher Kankipati and Kraus exciting race so far um, I have to say that uh, I love this race track I don't know uh, if many people do but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, a very, 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 very nice Roval. It oh, and Asher is wide again. Wow, big risk. Yeah, it's just a rub on the... It's just a rub onto the grass. Nothing big right there. Some... Oh! Clark Ooh, Archer Clark has Archer. gone off. He's been having a good race. That's definitely going to hurt him. the power too early it should be okay didn't see it with the wall there but this fight for p2 is really really eating up this fight for p2 is the fight on track and it is absolutely entertaining for everyone here look at this run that candapati has candapati swinging around the outside challenging into turn one, side by side, Catapati has the position and he has it signed and settled and sent for P2. Ajorn Catapati returns to P2. That was a beautiful move there from the driver from California, uh, but of clear uh, Indian origins from the great country of India. And so nice to have him back. He was always there. Or thereabouts uh, fighting for podiums and wins uh, before he had to leave us uh, for quite a bit of time due to work commitments but again he is back he has joined power slide for this series don't be fooled by the uh, delivery there uh, so uh, of course he, like i said many times could be a very 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 valuable asset to the power slide team and of course he is going to be uh, you know helped by uh, one of the top teams uh, of the sport uh, as well so good for him as we get into lap 15 out of 43 blocker 103.8 103.4 for Kalkipati despite having to make that overtake I tell you what uh, Austin let's bring in the lap time comparison Ooh, Kanapati is gaining on blocker but blocker so consistently pulling away from the rest of the field he is outside the draft um, Catapati is outside the draft of Blocker, and his, his pace is going to have to pull himself back into there. He might have to use a bit of push to pass the chase down at a Blocker, 
but he's currently got to worry about Mark Usher and Philip Cross right behind him. Okay, we can see the left rear suspension working hard as the car turns left through the banking and on the start finish straight once again you can see the great consistency from blocker let's see this lap here on 3.5 and this time he gains back two tenths of a second almost three so they are uh, uh, you know exchanging uh, good laps uh, with each other but so far the gap seems to be in good hands as we here have rolf and rasmussen fighting for position here comes bryant on the inside last week's winner situation remains the same no one gains no one loses but i think bryant might be in for a good secondary part of the race so let's jump on board with him on board with simon bryant last week's winner he's already up two spots in this battle with nicholas rasmussen and barrett Wolf. let's bring up his driver dashboard and look at his speed currently sitting in fifth gear shifting down all the way to first a big lockup up there from barrett roth ahead of rasmussen and him coming out of second gear shifting back up all the way to sixth gear And look at this move up ahead. Rasmussen going for the move on Roth. Rasmussen swinging around at 190 miles an hour across the line. Side by side they go and off goes Usher. Mark Usher went off. So let's see a replay of the overtake first. Uh, sorry about the quick cut, but Mark Usher uh, losing two places. Uh, sorry, losing one place. Uh, Philip Kraus promoted to the podium positions. Let's first see the back end of this overtaking maneuver. Rasmussen with a great pass around the outside. And at the same time that this was happening, I think turn one made another victim. Or maybe it was turn two. Oh, it was turn two. Lazy, lazy spin. Not even a spin, but that was all it took for Asher to go into the grass and Philip Kraus with this beautiful livery uh, which matches quite nicely with some parts of our uh, overlay I have to say uh, especially the pit lane bar at the bottom is up into third place back to this fight here back to the fight for seventh between Rasmussen, Roth, Bright and Wow all these drivers been having a good race, some of them a little bit more rougher than others. But they're all tightly packed in this competitive grid and spot. A uh, sep little separation for Reston and Rolf as Bright and Wild are behind them. Uh, by a couple tenths, and you can see late on the brace goes Christopher Wow. He's been having a very tough race. Has a good run here, the Canadian. And here comes Christopher Wow. Looking on the outside, he's got a run, but he does have the speed as there Thomas Zeiger's off. The go daddy car off the track and he loses a spot to Clark Archer. The biggest mover of the field back in that four way tie at four overtakes each. Well, once again, drivers struggling to come to terms with this very, very difficult turn one and two. And he goes all the way into the grass. You will see Archer go past. So one position, one position lost by uh, the green machine there back to this fight here because we have Rasmussen and Rolf and Bryant and uh, and 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 while fighting together for position Rolf good chance expect him to get a good run looking around the outside not going to get it on that move. He's going to have to dip back into that draft to get enough speed. 
but coming down the straight, he is going to look around the outside. Side by side, they go heading into turn one, but it's going to be Rasmussen who's going to carry it into the breaking zone. Rasm Rasmussen ahead of Ross Rasmussen keeps it into P7. At the same time, in the back, Bryant was able to hold on his position as we have a move here because Andrew Wood, with his wooden car, has been able to get past Bauman. Uh, so up into into uh, P11, he goes. And that makes him the biggest mover of this race. The only car to go five places up. And down the inside, here comes Roth heading into the hairpin. Can Roth hold it off or can Rasmussen get the exit? It looks like push to pass is going to be used. Rasmussen swinging around the outside on the exit, side by side, heading into the oval. Roth's going to have a good run. He's on the preferred line down onto the inside and on the apex, but on the exit, it's where it's going to be about. Rasmussen dips back into the draft, swings back onto the outside, a little bit too aggressive of a cut of the wheel. Heading into turn one, side by side, he's on the back wheel. Oh, here comes Brian. And here comes Simon. Brian, a late dive in a charge. Brian's going to steal it for B8. But Raz just sneaking down to the inside. He's going to do the same thing back that Brian did. But on the switch right, Brian's got this. Brian's got the inside, but he's held up just a little bit by Raz. And Raz is going to fight it back for P8. Fantastic stuff. Wow. Oh. While uh, sniffed a chance and said, okay, I'm going for it, but then had to go hard on the brakes, so Austin, this was so close to a big mess, would have been very sad because these three guys are fighting, and look, this big fight, and how much has Rolf pulled away from, uh, it was actually a f effectively a four-way fight, and now thanks to this, uh, I have to say, rather brilliant bit of racing, he is able to pull away 1.7 seconds over the rest of this trio. Yeah, when cars are just side by side heading into these tight, twisty corners, it just holds them up so much. Thomas Zeiger getting past Clark Archer, but back to Brian and Rasmussen in this wonderful battle for eight. Zeiger's off the track once more. And last week's winner, Simon Bryant, getting up into P8 now. Thank you, Emmett, Emmett Shulley, for subscribing to us on YouTube. Oh, thank you very much. Hopefully you are enjoying this fantastic, fantastic race. As once again, this time is Archer pointing in the wrong direction. No one wants this fifth place or there or thereabouts. And I might oh, be seeing some damage, as well. some damage on his car. Back uh, left. So here we go. That is uh, Ziger behind him in the green car. Oh, he went a bit deep and then... A bit of lag and then a Whoa. bit more of contact very very unfortunate there as we go back live because we have the first big name in the pits here comes mark asher and thomas ziger is uh, unsurprisingly following him considering he must have some front wing damage after that collision but back to the fight on track brian and rasmussen Front wing to gearbox with each other for most of this race. Love that front nose of Rasmussen's car. That tiered color system they got going on there. And you can see both these drivers are using different front arrow. Um, Rasmussen is using a higher arrow compared to Simon Bryant's. Great spot. And thank you to iRacing because it's not... Uh common for simulators uh, to show this to us uh, in uh, you know as, a, as spectators absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, level of detail and great spot by you austin as per usual now given that austin has all the experience in the world having raced uh, open wheelers uh, in real life uh, and having crashed open wheelers in real life so he knows all <laughs> the aspects of racing you have to mention it <laughs> everyone is in by the way so <laughs> <laughs> I said the good thing first, you know. Thanks. Thanks. It means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> if we start covering truck series, you you can't say that. <laughs> Here comes Get Usher looking down the inside across, cross swinging around the outside, and Usher across still side by side, but it's gonna be cross holding off Usher. 4P3 and Cross 
we did go into the pits and the overcut worked for him. Long stop for uh, Laura Gerhardt, of course, and for uh, uh, Christopher Weil, of course, because of damage that they had because of what happened in, in, uh, in, you know, during the race, especially the very, very chaotic start of the race. So, good stop for Blocker. He was able to pull away a decent gap from the rest of the field, yeah, especially because the first, in the last few laps, Kankipati was uh, inching slowly, I might have yet, but inching closer and closer to our race leader. There he is. Uh, uh, that is a lapped car, that is Tangay Kanginer, like I said, switching from Penske to uh, old school Ganassi for this race. And here we go once again, Zeiger, in, in, always in a fight, is uh, the driver from the uh, Germany, Austria and Switzerland club. And if we go back, Andrew Wood and Christopher Weil, uh, while after doing his repairs, should be able to push a little bit more in this second half of the race. So basically Austin, one lap more, one lap less, but almost everyone put the, you know, split the race into equal halves. Yes, it is a very equal track and it, it's honestly a good idea to do the equal halves pit strategy since that is the most uh, even on the tires and fuel use. Um, and I'm pretty sure all these guys are looking to do that with the fuel. They might have underfueled the car uh, in a way to only take them halfway through the race. And I have a feeling that's what Philip Cross did to get the jump on uh, Mark Usher. Mark Osh has been having a very tough race. Started P2, had a few spins, and he's and off tracks, and he's lost Ooh. down two spots. Big bit of oversteer. We saw him having that trouble in qualifying and warm-ups, where that corner's been giving a lot of drivers trouble. The hot track temperature and just the speed, the odd speed of that corner. You want to take it like a medium speed corner, but it's actually a slow speed corner. It's just very deceiving. Uh, it just shoots out the car's back end. Let's have a quick look in with the weather uh, once again. Austin, take it away. It is a wonderful 77 degrees here in Miami, Florida on the track. It is 95 degrees, partly cloudy skies, 63% dew point, and a few numbers that I have no idea what it says. Winds of 6 miles per hour, and that is your weather here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Race car driver, commentator, and awesome weatherman, Austin Knight, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we have him on board. Some call me a jack of all trades, and Usher once again, bit of understeer, uh, snap oversteer right there. As he headed, headed into that apex, this car just jumped to the side. So he's struggling with slow speed corners, is Mark Usher, and... Cross is not because Cross is on the higher downforce setting compared to Mark Usher. You can tell that he's on the higher downforce because he has those black wings on top of that second tier front wing. As we go on board with Mark Usher, he only has one tier of front wing. So that's going to give him better straight line speed, but very unstable in the medium speed corners. And that corner that he's struggling in is the fastest corner on this circuit. So in those in the road course, Cross has the advantage, and Usher has to be so daring on the brakes each time and distress him. We're going to ride on board with him, coming into that corner, and if he's going to make it 3x3, three three, you're going to see a little snap of the wheel heading into this corner. Well, prove me wrong this time, Mark Usher. It always works like this. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, he has to be so close when they come out, and of course this is not going to help him because they have, of course, Cross will have the uh, the, the slipstream from Kenginer there at the front. Therefore, uh, this is another lap he will have to chalk off of the, uh, you know. But even if he's able to get the move, Mark Asher on Cross, then of course Cross is 
by all intents and purposes I think going to be very close to him in the infield he should have moved with on uh, by Asher and then of course uh, he will mitigate the lack of uh, of speed Ooh, on the oval yeah with uh, with uh, having Asher's draft so tough situation for our number one rated driver in the room who as things stand will gain a bit of a rating of course the biggest gainer would be uh, Arjuna Kankipati with a lofty 68 if you want to know this data while you are driving and live on top of your screen so no need to look every, uh, elsewhere sdkgaming.co.uk and I will give you well hopefully uh, you know uh, if you need it some uh, technical support so it's a win-win situation I also provide technical support uh, not as good as Marcos but if you need a quick fix, I'm, I'm also good for it. As Cross and Usher still having that battle, that low downforce up Usher is giving him a great run, getting back up into Cross. Oh, it's a and good chance, but now the braking area will make it difficult. And as you can see, once again, he's able, uh, the driver in third place, he's able to, you know, break a little bit with a little bit more confidence, I should say. As Ziger uh, not having a good day, losing another position. But back to this fight here, and let's follow closely. You can see the difference uh, in the smoothness, I'd say, of both drivers uh, that they are having thanks to the different setup they picked uh, into the infield section. It is definitely going to be a uh, interesting to see the smoothness. Usher has the upper hand in the straights but the dirty air he's picking up from behind cross is hurting him right now because of that lower down for setup that setup is meant for being ahead of the pack not being behind another car it is very slippy but it is he's struggling in the corners But you're seeing a lot of different drivers uh, in between setups. They want the higher downforce, and they're also going for the lower downforce. I believe Adam Blocker uh, is running a lower downforce. And let's take a look at Bar Barrett Roth swinging around the outside of Thomas Zeiger. And Zeiger just went hard on the brakes. Didn't want to fight it, it heading into there. And wow, that is fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, hopefully no lawsuit coming in the next few days, but... <laughs> <laughs> See the gap if it's editing showing that I flowing. really like... If it's showing that I really like this color scheme, I really like this color scheme. <laughs> As Cross and Usher, you can see each lap, Usher is faster than Cross, but after some issues, like with lap cars or by himself, he keep he's not as consistent as he is, as that timing screen is showing a little bit down, especially after last lap, but that big jump up. And this is our just to half a second, the point three of a second. Currently he's half a second behind him. But well, if you look at the timing screen, the, it's showing completely different things that Usher, he is closing down on cross. Back on the part of the track that favors, really in favor of Mark Usher, the oval section. And once again, you will see that car come close and close and close and close and close. See, two tenths of a second gain there. But all the hard work uh, is undone by the fact that the uh, number uh, one car uh, looks to be a bit slower, especially in the secondary part of the infield section, this sequence of right-handers here that really puts, uh, puts Asher at a disadvantage. Let's see now, basically identical. This is the corner where, uh, of course, Austin, you noticed it. Asher seems to suffer the most, even though I have to say this particular lap it seems to be very, very close, closer than usual. Let's see. This could 
be a good he chance. Is, yeah, he's definitely on point. He's lined up, getting that nose buried into that gearbox. Not the best of exits for Usher because all that hard work, he's dropped down to half a second already. And it looked like he was going to get a good run, but unfortunately that ace is not the best for Mark Usher. Oh, we lost that a across, tremendous uh, amount of time. Look at that. I think cross activated uh, push the pass as a defense mechanism. That this could be absolutely uh, a possibility, and uh, of course, once again, a great spot from you. Jump yeah, I believe board, he uh, has good with him. Usher. He is closing back in on cross. So there might have he might have used push to pass as defense, and with ten laps to go, that is a good use of the de of. Oh, pushed past charge and, oh, Usher struggling on the brakes. But good save, keeping it out of the grass. Eight tenths behind Cross. Yeah, this lap is going to be a write-off. Let's see. Almost, uh, yeah, getting to 183, 184, 185. Very quick is cross as well. Of course, he had a better exit. Ah, uh, once again, uh, sliding uh, sideways uh, is uh, our number one rated driver, and we could have a chance here for Ziger for a move. Good old race to the line between these two, Ziger and Barrett Roth. Ziger now around the outside, but Roth not giving him the easy slip as Roth defends it onto the inside. Great racing from these two between Ziger and Barrett Roth for P5. And Barrett Roth is your new biggest mover of the race. Up seven spots. And you see what he's doing. Went down to the inside. He's breaking the draft of Thomas Zieger because Zieger is on that lower downforce uh, package. And I believe Roth is on the higher downforce. He is. One of the cool details about the Indy car that you can spot the actual setup changes and which package that these guys are using. Uh, unlike a few other cars, Formula 3.5, uh, where you can see the uh, changes. It's a great run from Ziger in uh, 3 and 4. And here comes Ziger. Good run that lower downforce back. It's giving him all the speed, but heading into turn one. Let's see if he has the confidence on the brakes. No, he can't do it. He can't send it. As Barrett Roth just has so much grip heading into that braking zone. He could brake so much later using the air as a brake. And Zinger is going to have to beat him before the line to get that position. As... Mark Usher spinning up the tires as he's trying to chase down Philip Cross, but he's fallen down two seconds. What has happened to Mark Usher? Maybe this corner again. Let's see. Final corner before the oval. And again, same mistake oh. as before. He's yeah. on the limit. He's over the limit. Oh, wow. He clipped the grass there. Hopefully he survived. Yes, he did. Now Ziger uh, still trying to get a good run at Rolf, but Rolf weaving maybe a bit too much, but that's not for us to decide. Left, right, left, right on the front stretch. Locking. A oh, lot of smoke right there. Another puff of smoke from Barrett Roth. So he's got to work on his braking, but Zieger can't really do much to fight that since he can't go any faster heading into these corners. It's all about the exits for Zieger, and that was a little bit too much on the gas right there, and his back wheel spun up, and Roth breaking the draft, weaving on the back straight. That's frowned upon in some leagues, but since this is the open series, he is going good and well. Here 
here comes Zyger. Buried in that gearbox. This can get, prove a good run for him and a great setup in these closing laps. Once again, Rolf breaking that draft, not wanting Zyger on his tail. Coming up to this secondary straight. And oh, oh, oh big mistake. slide and Mana out of control. This is going to be the moment that Zieger needs. Zieger's got a good one. He's seeing blood in the water. Stop aside, they go heading into the final hairpin. And Roth late on the break, setting it up into the hairpin. Another puff of smoke. Let's see if Zieger can gain it onto the gas. No, he can't. Bear Roth saving P5. But now Zieger is so close to Roth. He, he's in Roth's head. Now, mental games aside, Barrett Roth is pushing the car a little bit over the limit as the charging GoDaddy car is coming up to make a move for P5, heading into turn one and two. Roth still leading, but can he keep the car stable? Is he going to be a little bit more conservative or is he going to put it all on the line? Because look who's behind him, another big slide for Roth. That's going to hold up Zieger as Simon Bryant is slowly closing in on these two. And Zagger looking to sell a dummy down the inside. He did get Roth to take a little small look, much smoother through that corner. But here comes Zagger once more, two tenths, 1.5 tenths. Here he goes, one tenth down the inside, but he's going to back off once more. great fight between these two and like you were saying Simon Bryant is lurking there I think Ziger is getting a bit uh, upset at this constant moving by uh, Barat Rolf left and right but he has a fantastic run but Rolf is so good at defending the inside but this is a fantastic chance for Ziger he needs to be brave it's a amazing fight Rolf and Ziger battling it out and this will definitely go to the very end of the race unless something happens but simon bryant he's closing in on these two and since they're battling hard this might become a three-way fight for fifth place and late on the brakes goes zyger he's probably testing out his brake set to see if he can't make a dive right now Heading into the hairpin. Let's see if he's going oh, to put some pressure. Big they are both deep. slide. <laughs> both of them locking up their front left, uh, heading into the hairpin. And once again, same situation as before. Ziger has the speed, but this is going to be enough. He seems to be closer than ever before now. Closer than ever. Push the pass. Oh no! He used it. They touch. No damage. There was damage, but then it corrected itself. And Ziger. Push to pass ahead of Rolf. Two laps to go here at Homestead Miami Speedway. A great time. And let's take an instant replay in slow motion to see what has happened. At least look at look at how far Zyger was. He just appears in the screen, says, hello, I'm here. A little contact between them. No damage that I can see. No, no, it, it and definitely back out, pushed to pass. So good for him but you could sense there was a bit of frustration boiling between these two drivers oh uh, yeah and uh, let's say that Ziger wanted to get the maximum out of his draft a little bit of contact there thankfully they both survive uh, because that would be a, would have been a big shame it was super entertaining in the meantime our race leader is one and a half laps away from bringing home the checker flag as we close down this second half of the double header here at the beach and of course he will be able to celebrate with a little bit of the bubbly so to speak yeah bubbly will be provided at the podium like always and would a bombman having a good old fight for p10 bombman trying to swing it around the outside but andrew wood in that wood oh, no. oh no snap oversteer and on the last lap white flag is in the air unfortunately wood's car was shot out from that small correction and collected bombman oh 
That is ag that is so unfortunate for Bauman right there. As Adam Blocker has IndyCars three and four to go. And the crowd stands up. Last week, it was stolen from him on the last lap. But this week, he's going to get the bubbly as Adam Blocker takes the win here at Homestead Miami Speedway. And returning Ajor Kedapati takes P2 ahead of Philip Cross, who on a wonderful strategy got p3 ahead of mark usher i mean fantastic drive fantastic drive from uh, from uh, from cross there to get a uh, podium uh, i would say out of nowhere uh, because i was not expecting him to be is i think a relatively new name to the series in the meantime Ziger gets the top five rolf in sixth bryant will finish seventh with cross's teammate uh, and boss uh, niklas rasmussen in eighth Christopher Weil, what could have been for him because I think he had uh, a very, very, very good chance at the podium and he has to be careful because he might be disqualified because no, not everyone has taken the start-finish line and he is uh, going for a lap of the oval uh, He has to be careful because he finished in ninth. But racing doesn't take too kindly to penalties if anyone el everyone else hasn't finished uh, the race. I think he got away with it. And here we yeah, go. Yeah, he's, final he's race gonna results. get away with it. Your final race result for Power Slide. Adam Blocker takes another victory here. Uh, right behind him is Ajron Katapati in second. And Philip Cross finishing out the podium ahead of Mark Usher. Thomas Zeiger. Barrett Rolf, Simon Bright, Nicholas Rasmussen, Christopher Wow, Andrew Z. Wood, Clark Archer, Chris Ballman, Richard Holt, Tangay Kinganar, Laura Gearhart, Alessandro Roccatello, and Will Lamb in 17th place. What a. Saw, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Austin. Go ahead. What a great race we saw here. Excellent fighting in the midfield all the way to top five. I. I always said that this is the best road course on iRacing and Roval on iRacing. And honestly, it proved my point here today that this is how you make a Roval. And this is how you make a competitive Roval. Marco, what did you think? Well, it was fantastic. I absolutely agree with you. Great, great stuff. The drivers really, really put on a show. And uh, from what I'm reading... Uh, in the YouTube chat, you guys at home really, really liked it. Uh, next week, we will be back Glenn with Rimo some... Tegi. Yeah, we are going to Japan, which makes me extremely happy because I will be able to uh, say some words in Japanese without uh, them feeding too much out of context. And, of course, tell a little bit of a story of that oval, which is sadly not being used anymore. But, Austin, I think you know very well, a unique kind of oval. A uh, big, big challenge for these drivers. It's it's like the gateway oval. Uh, first turns wider than the uh, second turn. So it goes from wide to tight. It's going to be a great challenge for setup uh, for these drivers. And speaking of the drivers, we do have drivers ready for the interview. And let's bring in our good old friend, Adam Blocker. Howdy, 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 Adam. How are you doing? Congrats on the win. Yeah, thanks. So that race started on Paul. A little bit scary at the start where you dropped behind Mark Usher. What was your thoughts on the race and how to get past him? Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty good race. Um, made a little mistake on lap one, I guess turn two. Um, let Mark get by, but wasn't really too worried because I knew I had a big straight line advantage on everybody, so... Yeah, just past Mark at um, the end of lap one. And from there, um, just kind of, you know, kept my calm, tried to run as fast as I could in the infield, and then use my straight line advantage just to stay in front of him. And then eventually, uh, Mark made a couple little mistakes and let me get to a point where I thought if I used a push to pass and got dropped off a lap car, I could, I could uh, 
gap them and loot they could lose my draft because they were really just hanging on because they had my draft i think and um i did that i saw we had an opportunity with the lap cars so we used push to pass and the lap cars draft to, to break away and yeah from then it was kind of just pace management i think arjuna had comparable pace but um then at the end you know i had a lot of push to pass saved up that he didn't so i kind of pulled more of a gap all right we're Draft is something very important here on this road course and setup as well. We saw a lot of drivers uh, tiptoeing between the low downforce package and then the medium downforce package. Uh, which package did you prefer? Did you prefer, and uh, was it a hard choice? Uh, it wasn't really a hard choice for me. I was on low downforce just because. Um... Yeah, I was pretty much the same pace with both of them. So if you're the same pace with both of them, you might as well run the one that gives you a little bit better straight line advantage. Uh, the main thing you have to worry about when you do that is you can always, it's pretty easy to get rear-ended because um, you have to break a little bit earlier into corners. So you probably saw a few times Mark Usher was, was all over my gearbox, going especially going into turn three. All right. Thank you, Adam. Before we let you go, would it, do you have anyone you wanted to shout out? Uh, not really, just, I guess, power slide for um, putting subs together. And, uh, yeah, you guys for calling the Thank you, Adam. And uh, you have a good week, and we'll see you next week at uh, the Oval at Twin Ring Motegi. Yeah, see you then. So, uh, in the meantime, we thank the Team Doyle for uh, subscribing to Apex Racing uh, TV. Uh, so, uh, another interview with us is going to be Nick Rasmussen. Hello, Niklas, and welcome to the boot. Hello, thank you. So, you started P8, finished P8. We know that you are still, uh, you know, you we talked to you in the in the past about this uh, still uh, learning uh, your ropes with this car so how was it today in this very unique race tra uh, racetrack yeah it's the first time i uh, i raced around here uh, pretty interesting layout um that's got to be said i mean i i started date and finished date so all things considered i think i should be uh, decently happy with that um, had some some decent pace, uh, but struggled on the braking. Couldn't really get that figured out. Um, so made a clumsy mistake early in the race, lost P5, and later in the race, um, I think somebody, uh, like the guy in front of me, had to check up. And uh, obviously, I didn't know he had to do that because it was in the middle of the corner and there was some contact there, unfortunately, um, and gave me a bit of damage. Um, second part of the race was pretty calm, to be honest. I just tried to to keep the damn thing on the track and uh, you know waiting to see if something happened up front uh, but yeah again it, it was no okay result um, it was uh, I think nice to, to have you back I think if I am not if, if I'm not mistaken uh, Philip your teammate got uh, got to the podium and there is another name that we haven't seen around here so is your team now switching the focus maybe doing a little bit more of this uh, IndyCar uh, races yeah, I mean, obviously, we got some good plans for the future. I um, think you should expect to see more of us. Uh, got to congratulate Philip on the mega drive to P3. Well done, man. Um, but yeah, um, I personally plan to run as many of these races as I can. I was planning to run the entire season. Unfortunately, something personal came up that uh, kind of affected me a lot. So I decided to take some time off. And uh, yeah, this week was a good week to return, I think. So yeah. Uh, here I am, and uh, we'll be here for future races as well. It was absolutely great to have you back, Nicholas. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Um, yeah, first of all, you guys, thank you for broadcasting the race. I mean, incredible to actually come out here and race against some of these incredibly talented guys. Um, and obviously, you putting on the broadcast makes so that uh, people show up and, and we can get some amazing racing in. Um, so... Huge thanks for that. Um, I got to thank my team, Last Lab Motorsports. Uh, brilliant team to be part of. Uh, very thankful for um, all the support they're giving me. Uh, I got to thank uh, Spark Virtual Reality as well for sponsoring us. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Niklas. And catch you very, very soon, hopefully next week. Hopefully, yes. See ya.
That was Nicholas Rasmussen. And let's bring in a name that we haven't said in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, finishing P2 after a uh, long way to return after I believe it was the first time we uh, broadcasted. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Ajuna Kentapati. Hey guys, thank you for that for that warm welcome. Anytime, it's always it's always great seeing one of the OG uh, drivers of the season uh, hop back in. Yeah, no, it's been uh, been quite a while, and I'm glad to you know finally jump back in. And uh, you know what a race we had. It was I was not expecting such a strong you know split to show up, and you know I think everyone was basically 3k plus and nice clean race at the start. And yeah, I I just really enjoyed that, and I hope it made for some good good viewing as well. It was definitely good viewing. You qualified P3 and you finished up on the podium in second place. How is that race for you? The race itself was good. Um, qualifying was a little disappointing, uh, but I recovered quite well on my second lap. But I was running quite a lot of downforce compared to Adam, for example. And Adam just kind of... I didn't have anything for him, so it took me a while to get past Mark. Uh, it required a few push to passes before I could figure out how to do that, given my lack of speed. And yeah, once I was there, it was easy to pull away from him in the infield and kind of just make space for myself, basically, to to run the rest of the race. Yeah, I was asking Adam Blocker the differences in deciding the uh, higher downforce and the lower downforce uh, package. He was using the lower downforce, and I'm assuming you're using the medium downforce package. Uh, I think I might have been closer to the higher end of things. Um, just because this was my, you know, my first race back in a while, I felt a lot more comfortable, especially in the infield, being able to throw it around and and uh, be more aggressive. So, uh, you know, we did we have the strength of field races on Monday, and based on that, you know, I kind of had to drive my way through the field. So I enjoyed having all that downforce. Uh, but yeah, I think Adam maybe had the better approach and you're going a bit lower downforce because it really makes, if, if I was, you know, right behind Adam, I wouldn't have been able to pass him even with the push to pass. That was the speed difference we had. I see. Well, next week it's going to be not a lot about the uh, aero package as it will be the oval at Twin Ring Motegi, but it's all going to be about suspension and wing angles. Are you excited for that? Uh, yeah, I am. It will be my first oval uh, in Indy in a while. Uh, I've actually joined Team Power Slide, Power Slide Motorsports, uh, on the IndyCar side. So I'm excited to, you know, start learning from them and working for, you know, more with them. And yeah, it should be really cool to start doing more of the oval stuff as well. Well, I know there's certainly a lot of oval specialists there at Power Slide, and it's always going to be great to have Adam Blocker and Laura Gearhart as a teammate, since we all know on how crazy that those two are. Yeah, it definitely has already got me motivated to start practicing a lot more and, you know, improving. So, uh, yeah, really excited about this opportunity. So, you know, thank you to everyone on the team. Well, congrats on P2 and the new signing. Uh, before we let you go, anyone who wants to shout out? Uh, you guys, thank you again for continuing with this awesome broadcast. You know, I think it shows just how good it is to have the broadcast when you have fields like this show up for a track like Homestead, which is not historically very popular in iRacing for a road course. So, yeah, just, you know, big, big thank you to you guys for continuing to do this. Thank you, Ajorn. You have a good day and a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, you too. Anytime that was Ajorn Katapati. Still don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I believe since he didn't correct me, I was pretty close. So, Marco, before we go, any closing thoughts? It was a fantastic double header with uh, two worthy winners. Of course, uh, uh, we went so close to a sweep, of course, from uh, Adam Blocker. We lost the lead in the final lap, but that was a fantastic, fantastic victory by Bryant. Uh, and, of course, today he, he redeemed himself, uh, did Adam, uh, by winning the race with ease, even though it was never 100% uh, sure until the end, because the way his races can go. If you haven't had your racing fix, don't worry, because tomorrow, Saturday, we have back-to-back -back races here on Apex Racing TV. Well, the first is on our channel, right here where you are now. 
At, six, at 18 GMT, the Euro V8s are back for the first points paying round of the season from beautiful Monza with no chicanes. So prepare your popcorn. And then, of course, later down the, the line at 22 GMT, iRacing Esports Network, Barcelona Historic with the Formula 3.5. Don't cut the two corners because otherwise you'll be penalized and banned for one week. At least that's what the iRacing higher ups said in the Porsche Cup Forum where they have the same track this week. And let's say that you can cut quite a bit of a couple of corners towards the end. I don't know if you saw that, Austin. It is quite a hilarious the amount of track that you can cut. So don't do that because tomorrow I you will be... Yeah, you will be under our very, very, very watchful eye, and who knows what might happen. <laughs> All jokes aside, I'll be running it, a counter. That seems like a good idea. It's been a, an absolute pleasure to bring you this double header next week back to the normal business of uh, Swing Rim Motegi. It's been a pleasure, and Austin, take it away. Thank you for everyone joining us here and apex racing tv for the ntt indycar open series give us some feedback on how you like the new layout and look of the design i i really like it uh i'm a big formula e fan so yeah it shows why hopefully we don't get sued over that but don't believe it will thank you mark for putting all these wonderful cameras and graphics together i'm austin knight and i hope y'all have a good night Thank <laughs> you.